Oh, today I'm gonna tell you about a story called Miriam by Truman Capote. Let us begin. We're introduced to our protagonist, whose name is Miriam Miller. She's an old biddy who lives alone in an apartment with her bird and enjoys the occasional cigarette. She doesn't do anything out of the ordinary, which means something very out of the ordinary is about to happen to her. Mrs. Miller decides to go to the movies one night, and while she's standing in line, she notices a small girl with silver hair. This girl comes up to Mrs. Miller and hands her some money, asking her if she'd buy her a ticket to the movie. Who do you think I am, bitch? Just some old bag who doesn't have anything better to do with her time than to buy strangers tickets with their own money? Oh, wait a minute. So Mrs. Miller buys her a ticket, and the little girl introduces herself as Miriam. What are the chances? About a week later, Mrs. Miller's chillin' at home, getting ready for bed after a long week of doing nothing. Then the fucking doorbell rings. All right, Mrs. Miller, here's all you have to do. Just hide somewhere upstairs, crouch down at your window, and watch your porch until you see somebody leaving. I. I, I don't do this. But Mrs. Miller gets fed up with the incessant doorbell ringing and gets the door anyway. Big mistake, Mrs. Miller. Surprise, surprise, it's little Miriam who proceeds to waltz on in like she owns the place. Yo, Miriam, just because I have no life, that doesn't mean I want friends. So Miriam's in the living room snooping around and pestering Mrs. Miller's bird. And then she demands food. Hey, Mrs. Miller, here I am. This is me. Make me food. I'm getting a little underground man vibes from this chick. So Mrs. Miller fixes her up a sandwich. And while she's in the kitchen, she starts to hear her bird start to sing when she had previously Previously told Miriam not to bother it. Ooh, you fucking bitch. But fortunately, the bird is fine, but instead, Miriam is going through Mrs. Miller's jewelry box. She demands that Mrs. Miller gives her her cameo brooch. The fuck is a brooch? But Mrs. Miller's so weirded out by this girl that she gives in. Finally, after the little bitch is done eating her sandwich, she asks Mrs. Miller for a kiss goodnight. Mrs. Miller rightfully refuses, but then Miriam loses her shit and slams a vase on the ground. That's it, Miriam. No bedtime stories for you, young lady. Just get out of my house. Over the next week, Miriam appears to be gone, so Mrs. Miller takes a few days to herself, does a little shopping, but her fun is soon to end. One night, she gets another knock on her door. Who could it be this time? Mrs. Miller listens to my advice this time and refuses to open the door until the ringing stops. Soon, the doorbell stops and the coast seems clear, but when Mrs. Miller turns around, there's Miriam, sitting on a box looking at her just like a little devil girl. Okay, in Mrs. Miller's defense, I did not take teleportation into account here. Miriam proclaims that she is moving into Mrs. Miller's house. You know, I'd say I didn't invite you, but I really don't want you to smash my TV, so... But still, Mrs. Miller finds this a little spooky, so she goes to her neighbor's house and slams on the door and asks for them to check out their house for any spooky little girls. I just like to imagine her neighbors are like humoring her, and, like they know Mrs. Miller's kind of off her marbles, but if it'll keep her from bothering them, then they'll do it. So the neighbors look around Mrs. Miller's house and, <laughs> big surprise, they don't find her. All right, Mrs. Miller, your house is free of creepy little girls. Now, please never speak to me again. Mrs. Miller starts to wonder if Miriam ever really existed. You know, maybe it was all in her imagination and Miriam was just like this physical representation of a part of herself that she kept locked away and oh my god, there she is in the next room! I'm getting the fuck out of here!